Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Daryl here. It is bright and freaking early, man. It's 3 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, I've been up for a couple hours already, and I've been going through different news stories, looking for stuff to talk about this morning. I was thinking about talking about Donald Trump, and the news stories, uh, there's this story that's been making the rounds for the last couple of days about him talking about Gettysburg, and uh, just this this nonsense that he, he was spewing about Gettysburg being beautiful, weirdly beautiful, and... Uh, the battle at Gettysburg. It reminded me so much of like four or five years ago when my, my channel was first starting out. I did a video and it's the most, I got like 70 views at first and it was like I was so so elated that I got that many views and uh, he talked about the airports at 70, 1776. Remember that? And uh, I was going to talk about that today. This this channel started out being like uh, I, I started talking about Bo the Fifth Column kind of like a, a uh, anti-Trump channel. And it hasn't, I haven't been getting as many views when I do Trump videos, so I kind of decided not to talk about that today. What I'm gonna talk about is very personal. A lot of times I'll pick, a, I'll pick a subject where I kind of put myself on the spot, you know, where I talk about things I, I usually wouldn't talk about. This is, I've called this my confessional before. And I like to talk about, about things that happened to me and the reason I talk about these things is because I feel like it happens to other people or other guys or the people like me or maybe not people like me. And then people don't want to talk about it. Uh, I think uh, this some of the stuff I talk about happens to a lot of people, but most people just keep it to themselves. Those are the things I like to talk about. So yesterday, I, I was you know considering what to talk about this morning. And I remembered yesterday, I'm going to tell you guys about this. I got hit on. By I, I I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I got hit on. I was I was laying out in the sun. It was one of the most the warmest, most beautiful days yesterday here in Connecticut. Uh, let let me let me lay out the whole story for you. All right. Uh, I usually I I tell you guys I work out every day and I, I I work out for four hours. As soon as I finish this video, from 4 a.m. till about 8 a.m. I work out and I finish it with a bike ride. And I was running a little late, late yesterday and I finished the bike ride about 10 a.m. And it's a beautiful day here in Connecticut yesterday, uh, 75 degrees. So I go by a park. I, I do about a 10 minute, uh, a 10 mile bike ride. And on the way back, I go, uh, I go all uphill on the way there. And then on the way back, it's all downhill. And when I get close to my home, I stop at a local park. And if it's a nice day, you know, I'll, t I'll take a rest there. I lay down, I uh, pick a grassy spot that's away from everybody. It's, it's totally secluded. And I'll take my shirt off and kick, you know, catch some sun. And it's right next to a lake and it's nice and quiet, you know, and, you know, I'll lay out there for a lot of times I'll doze off. I'll, I'll put my feet up on the bike so that I, if anybody tries to grab my bike, I'll know it. It'll wake me up. I'll have my feet up on the bike and I'll, I'll sometimes I'll doze off for you know, a few minutes and uh, catch some sun. The thing is, I moved to this area about three years ago and I, I remember hearing stories that you know, around around a lot of parks, there's meeting places for gay gay guys. You know, I've I've heard this you know for years. You know, cruising spots, and uh, I heard that there was. You know, I remember hearing for years ago that this was a, a cruising area. This one park, this area, where I picked to lay is right next to a lake. It's a I'll use it in my thumbnail. It's a big grassy like, kind of area where they have concerts. It's kind of stepped up with wall, like uh, a seating, seating, like grassy seating area. And it's right next to a lake. It's the perfect spot to catch some sun. But across the road, about, I'd say about a football field away, on the other side of the road is a, is a, a parking area. And that used, the legend was, it was a meeting place. Up behind that parking area, it goes up into the mountain, like up a, a hill into the hiking trails. And legend was that was a meeting, a cruising spot where gay guy, or gay gay men would meet, and sometimes engage in meeting rituals. And we'll just leave it at that. And this was years ago. I heard this, like when I was in my teens and twenties. You know, and I, I've been in this area for three years now, going by this park every day. And I, I, I you know, I, I, I've seen this stuff before. I grew up next to a park, and uh, I'll fill you guys in on my background a little bit. Um, familiar with gay men, let's just say that. And I never saw any signs of this happening at this park, you know. So I've, I've always felt, it's always pretty deserted at 10 a.m. 
And so I take my shirt off. I got my shorts on. I just got a pair of shorts in my, I'm 58 years old, you know, and I know I look 58 years old. You know, I know my skin's getting saggy. You know, um, I look my age. I got a lot of wrinkles. You know, I, I know I'm not, I'm not all that. And I'm laying out there and I could hear more people start to come around. It's probably about 11 or 12. And I decide to, to lay on my stomach because I know my back is, is white and I'm starting to get burned on my stomach. And it, it feels a little weird laying on my stomach, you know, with my back exposed. It just, it doesn't feel masculine, but nobody's really around. So I do, I, I, you know, I turn over and I actually put my feet up on my bike again, you know, like I'm, I'm on my stomach. I, I put one foot up on the bike, my, my leg up and I'm watching my phone. I'm watching videos on YouTube. And I hear some, I hear a man in front of me. I hear two girls talking real loud. And I look up and it's two beautiful, like 20 year old girls, 20, 25, 30 years. I'd say in their, somewhere in their 20s. And they're talking really loud. And I could say, when, you, when, you, when somebody's looking at you, you know, and you hear their voice, you know, you could tell they're looking at you because you could hear the, the voice directly di you know, directed at you. You know, you know, they're look they're you know, and I could hear these two talking and their voice sounded like it was coming right at me, you know, like they were trying to get my attention. I, I you know, I, I don't want to flatter myself, but that's what it sounded like. To be honest with you guys, this is what I think. I think when I'm laying down and I'm on a bike, they assume that I'm like, you know, I got a full head of hair. It's not all great. You know, they, they don't know that I'm almost 60 years old. You know, they think they probably think I'm a 20 or 30 year old guy from far away. You know, that's, you know, I, I got to be honest, you know, I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think I'm all that. I don't think at 58 years old, I'm going to, I don't, I don't want to attract a young girl like that, but they're pretty and they're gorgeous and it's, it's good for my ego. And I can tell, you know, and I see them looking at me, but as this is happening, I see a guy walking over from another, like the, the parking lot where these gay men meet supposedly years ago. So I look back down and I'm looking at my phone and the girls walk are walking away. And I hear a voice, a man's voice from about 30 feet away, uh, say, nice day, isn't it? And I'm like, oh my God, it's that guy. It's the guy I just saw. You know, at first I saw him up by the parking lot, like, like 100 feet away when I looked up. You know, and then I'm looking at the girls and he's about 50 feet away and he's just kind of looking around like this, you know. And then, you know, he's moving closer each time. And then I hear his voice like 30 feet away while I'm looking down at my phone. And I know he must be talking to me, either me, he's talking to me or he's talking to the girls that already walked by that were checking me out, not realizing that I'm a 58 year old guy, you know, and I'm like, oh no, you know, you know, this is, I think this is a guy hitting on me, you know, but I'm not sure at that point. So I, I, I ignore him, you know, it's like, I, I'm, I don't want to be bothered. I really don't. I don't want to be bothered by anybody. I just, you know, I'm just catching my, catching some sun and I'm going to go back home and work on my art and my painting and go about my day. So I hear the voice about two minutes, about, about 60 seconds later, I hear the voice closer now. It's about 15 feet away. And he's like, he says, uh, nice day, isn't it? You know, he's closer and he says it louder. Like he, he thinks I didn't hear him. So I'm like, oh no, you know, no, this, this guy, this guy is definitely trying to get my attention. You know, and I, I feel, now I feel silly for laying on my stomach with my shirt off, you know, my butt up exposed I, I'm, I'm being honest I, a lot of guys probably don't talk about this but i decided to talk about this today right so i still you know it could, it could just be a person being friendly next thing i know the guy sits down on the wall right next about 10 feet away from me and he goes nice day isn't it and i look over at the dude now i've had enough now i'm starting to get aggravated and i don't say a word and i just stare at the guy like you know like really you know and he, he starts talking about birds or feeding birds or something like that. And I'm just staring at him like, you know, you know, you're, you're not welcome here. You know, and it's, and it's not just because he's gay. It's just I just don't want to be bothered by anybody. But I, I'm, I'm really starting to get annoyed at this point. And I look back at my phone and I'm trying to calm my, my nerves. You know, I, I don't want to yell. I don't want to be a jerk. You know, I don't want to tell, you know, I don't want to be rude. Uh, you know, I'm hoping he takes the hint. And next thing, I thought he was still sitting there. And I kind of glanced back over and he's gone. Totally gone. Just disappeared like a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> so that, you know, and... Okay, so this is what happened yesterday. 
And I, I gotta be honest with you guys, this is this, what happened when I was younger. I, I don't like talking about this a lot on here because a lot of times when I talk about this, my monetization gets pulled. Uh, from the ages of 11 years old till 14, uh, my mom was dating a police officer after my dad died. And uh, he did things, bad things, anything you could imagine to me. Uh, he used to give me rolls of quarters to play asteroids, like after he was done. Um, I ended up stopping it once I was 14 years old with a baseball bat. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, he's dead now. Uh, not, not by, not by my, my hand. And then, you know, looking back in retrospect, I see how that, that affected me. And uh, I started using when I was in my like late teens and early 20s, artist in recovery. And uh, part of my using, I would use uh, cocaine and crack. And uh, I would go to adult bookstores where I knew. And I also delivered to adult bookstores. I was a magazine truck driver. And on my off time, I would go to these adult bookstores and there would be gay guys back in the back room cruising. And I, I, I think looking back, I think I went there, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but I, you know, I think I went there to try to get my power back because, you know, I get hit on in the back room and I think it would give me power again. You know, not that I would interact with these guys, although I had in, in, in previous instances, uh, where I would stay and control the situation. We'll just leave it at that. And I see how this affected me. So yesterday when this happens, I start to ask myself, you know, I'm, am I sure that I'm not picking that park? You know, I'm, I'm asking myself, I'm, I'm hoping I'm still not acting out in that fashion, you know, like subconsciously trying to get my power back by picking that area to lay even because I knew that you know in the back of my mind I knew that area was right there and I'm pretty sure you know I thought about it and you know I, for years this hasn't happened you know and I'm pretty sure but I, I, I wanted to ask myself to be sure that I didn't subconsciously pick that spot just to to to, to tempt dudes to do that uh, like I said you know because I think that, that looking back at my whole psychology and everything that happened to me I think that was part of getting like getting, you know, of acting out after what had happened to me. And yesterday, I think was a fluke, really, you know, and I'm glad I didn't get mad or yell at this guy. But, you know, in the end, it's really a compliment. It really is. You know, a guy or a girl thinking that you're attractive. It's a compliment. You know, and that's the way I look at it. I'd like to think that I'm a secure guy. You know, and I've gotten past the issues that things that have happened to me in my younger years. Uh, let me know if you've been hit on, if you uh, by by this by same sex, same sex people. All right, I'll be back later with another video. You guys have a good Tuesday.